everyone who has experienced, I believe it's true to say that everyone who has experienced LSD or another psychedelic would look on that experience, especially the first one, as a major life-changing event. What I'd like to do is to look at collective psychology because the introduction of LSD and psychedelics into the culture uh, produced a transform transformation of the entire culture, the consciousness of the culture. You could think of this as mass psychology or collective psychology. And, um, and I'm using for a framework of analysis a formulation by the um, Russian, Armenian, Greek uh, philosopher, teacher, George Gurdjieff, who is very influential in my work and my thinking, who formulated a principle that uh, he said that any transformation on whatever level, whether individual or collective or planetary or cosmic or microcosmic, goes through seven identifiable phases, like a musical octave, he called it the law of seven. And um, as you know, in the musical octave, when you go from the note mi to fa, the third to the fourth, uh, there's a half note. To make the transition from mi to fa, an external shock is necessary. An external shock is necessary to keep the movement going. If that doesn't happen, the movement of transformation kind of degenerates and gets diverted into something else. So what I would like to do then, what I'd like to suggest is to look at the octave process of sociocultural transformation and that the first note in that octave, the do, was the discovery of LSD by Albert Hoffman in 1943, which is, was a very peculiar event. Uh, but we're very aware of the consequences. I know all of you are for yourselves personally. And the, the one thing I want to just point out about that uh, event is the timing of it. 1943 was the height of World War II and the discovery, uh, the accidental so-called discovery of uh, LSD by Albert Hoffman followed within three months of the triggering of the first nuclear chain reaction by Enrico Fermi, which led directly to the discovery of the, and the use of the atomic bomb. So, in the 1940s, that's the Dole, we see the simultaneous development of atomic energy and a psychoactive drug that acts like an atomic explosion on the human mind, changing forever the world view and basic life orientation of all, all who experienced it. The first applications of LSD were in CIA and military, psychotomimetic research and psycholytic therapy in Europe. The Ray note, the second note, would be the 50s, the decade of the 50s, saw the introduction into the culture of several mind-expanding plant-based shamanic spiritual movements. Robert Gordon Wasson rediscovers the sacred mushroom ceremony of the ancient Aztecs, publishing his account in Life magazine in 1957. This triggers a movement in which tens of thousands of North American and European hippies start experimenting with hallucinogenic mushrooms, both wild and cultivated. The spread of hallucinogenic mushroom use and cultivation connects the psychedelic movement to age-old animistic shamanistic traditions. Also in the 1950s, a Brazilian rubber tapper starts a church, one of three eventually, in which the Amazonian shamanic entheogen Ayahuasca is the central sacrament, initiating a grassroots religious revitalization movement that has thousands of adherents worldwide to this day and growing. Then we come to the 60s, the third note in the octave, the me. Experiences with psychedelic drugs, LSD, psilocybin, move out of the psychiatric clinics and laboratories. Timothy Leary and associates begin their research with psychedelics at Harvard University. In 1963, published the psychedelic experience based on the Tibetan Book of the Dead. In California, novelist Ken Kesey and the Mary Prankster stage rock concert acid tests in which thousands of people take LSD while listening to music and watching light shows. Thus was born a revolution in collective consciousness, in which hundreds of thousands of people, perhaps millions, had one or more profound life-changing psychedelic experiences. 
the renowned philosophers Aldous Huxley, Alan Watts, and Houston Smith testify publicly to the religious and spiritual dimensions of psychedelic experience. Synchronistically, the 1960s saw the beginnings of environmental movement, Rachel Carson's 1962, The Silent Spring, usually considered the start of the American environmental movement. Uh, a major catalyst, the civil rights, anti-discrimination movements inspired by Martin Luther King, the anti-war movement, galvanized by the televised horrors of Vietnam, the women's liberation movement, which is consciousness raising circles, upsurge of creative innovation in music, the arts, fashion and literature, which we're still seeing to this day. Um, the sexual revolution and increased freedom of sexual expression catalyzed in part by the contraceptive pill. Each of those movements represents an expansion of consciousness, a going, I'm not saying they all involve taking LSD, some of the people may have taken LSD, but that's not the point. The point is the, the pattern of the expansion of consciousness going beyond the, the accepted paradigm way of looking at things, which is characteristic of a psychedelic experience, that's kind of the definition of it. Then comes the shock, the external shock. The assassination of John Kennedy, 1963, Martin Luther King, 1968, Robert Kennedy, 1968. The humiliating defeat of the United States in Vietnam. So then we have far 1970s, what happens in the 1970s. The effect of the shock on the consciousness movement, I believe, was to induce a profound soul searching and retreat from overt political activism. The use of psychedelic drugs becomes a minor footnote in the war on drugs, which swings into higher and higher gear in the Nixon and Reagan years. Marijuana is and remains in the middle and hotly contested ground, life-saving, mind-assisting medicine for millions, taboo political football for the ruling elites. Consciousness development movements of all kinds, Asian yoga and meditation systems, new forms of transpersonal experiential psychotherapy, new age spiritual practices, neo-shamanic, neo-pagan interests are cultivated and become academically respectable. Then we have the 1980s, the Sol, the fifth note. All the transformative social movements that began in the 60s continue to thrive, deepen, diversify and develop, reaching into all sectors of society, varieties of environmental ecological perspectives such as deep ecology, varieties of feminist and civil rights and social justice movements, transpersonal and non-denominational approaches to religion and spirituality. The rise of AIDS puts a major break on the exuberance of the sexual revolution. The spread of cocaine and crack cocaine intensifies the drug war with its rampant abuse and corruption of civil liberties, incalculable profits for the international drug cartels as well as money laundering mainstream economy systems. Use of the classical psychedelics remains almost invisibly underground. Alexander Shulgin creates MDMA, the first of many phenethylamine empathogens, as a valuable tool for psychotherapy. It spreads fairly rapidly from the couch to the street, becomes demonized and illegal. Rave parties of thousands involving ecstasy begin in England, spread to the US and around the world. The new Dionysian revels spread throughout the suburban middle classes as well as youth culture. Mushroom culture and ayahuasca religions continue to spread internationally. And we have the 80s, La, La, note of the octave. The Soviet empire collapses, leaving the US as the sole superpower, so-called. Increasingly nakedly de de dedicated to economic and military imperialism around the globe. The dizzying rise and spread of the internet fosters global interconnectivity in every area of life, from crime and commerce to science, education, information, including information about drugs, as we've seen, and activist solidarity. Multinational corporations foster economic hegemonic globalization. Growing global and public awareness of the multiple mounting global environmental disasters, climate change, species extinction, overpopulation, deforestation, Exhaustion of resources loom ever larger. The drug war policies continue defying logic, common sense, and civil rights. The psychedelic underground continues, becomes more knowledgeable, oriented toward healing, therapeutic, and spiritual values. Shamanic practices work with plant and spirit allies, herbal and natural medicine, organic farming and nutrition expand vigorously. New, more conscious, non-medical approaches to birth and birthing and death and dying gain more adherence. A living systems world view em emerges. The 2000s, this decade, the Note C.
with the election of George W. Bush, the Supreme Court coup d'etat, not unlike Hitler's legal accession to power in 1932. Yeah. <clears throat> the, um, <clears throat> The ambitions of world domination, the Imperium Americanum, stand ever more clearly revealed. Fascism internally, imperialism externally. Democracy becomes a smokescreen cover word for militarism. International treaties and institutions are abandoned with hardly a murmur of dissent or opposition from Congress or the media. Free trade becomes a cover word for neo-colonialist exploitation. The most interesting and progressive political activities occur outside of the U.S., in Europe, some parts of Asia, and countries like La in Latin America. Then comes the shock. September 11, 2001, the attack on the World Trade Towers. In the aftermath, the dominant direction, imperialist domination and corporate globalization is intensified by vengeful and simplistic militarism. Just as Hitler used the Reichstag burning, the U.S. government now uses the so-called two wars, drugs, war on drugs and war on terrorism, to fuel fear in the population and establish a police security state. As of 2003, the United States... <clears throat> As of 2003, the United States has turned itself into a loathed pariah in the international community, ridiculed for its stupendous ignorance and arrogance, and feared only because its hand is on paralleled military destructive power and its seeming determination to use it. Now, whether the external shock like that in the 60s will have the effect of ultimately strengthening the movements of consciousness transformation remains to be seen. At this point, the aims of spiritual self-development and the demands and needs of the larger society and world seem to be coinciding since the ordinary political means of stopping the juggernaut of preemptive war seem ineffective. There's a high-stakes cosmic game of planetary catastrophe that we're living through. The Earth has one or more trump cards ecological disasters could occur on such a scale that it would force the diversion of all military resources and manpower to address them. I confess to sometimes wishing it might happen thus. On the other hand, we cannot wait or hope for this card to be played. The internet is a wild card. It can amplify all other plays and create unexpected opportunities and openings. Those of us beings, human and other, that are more interested in the preservation of life in all its astonishing diversity and beauty than in the enlargement of personal or group wealth and power have only the same resources we've always had the capacity to move and help each other move into expanded awakened consciousness the purity and strength of our intention and the courage and creativity to realize the vision that in the motto of the 50,000 people who attended the World Social Forum in Porto Alegre, Brazil, formulated as, another world is possible. Thank you very much.